This is Podkit, episode 27. Trello is just a proxy. On Saturday, December 10th, 2016. And now, help me. This episode of Podkit is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk27. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. I we're, think we're back again. Yes, indeed, we are. Again, in person, live. Together forever. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's been a while. It has been a I while. I don't know how long. We're, we're going months. almost like two months now yeah. between every episode. Uh, you know, it, everything months, slows so. down in winter. Yes, indeed. But uh, after this, none of us will be in college anymore. That's right. I'm uh, planning on getting... You're going a... back to... You're getting a master's. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Not a moment. Not a moment, at least. I'm planning on getting a, a microphone and an audio interface so I can yes. record higher quality things remotely. Nice. I'm I'm at least hoping we can bump up the scheduling yeah. of this. And maybe, maybe not weekly. That was that was ridiculous. I don't know how we did that. <laughs> that was awesome. It was great. Yeah. I don't know. Every other week or something. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be kind of fun. And... I'll have better equipment, and mm-hmm. I'll I'll be in St. Paul till probably February. But then oh, I'll cool. maybe be in like I don't know something around the airport, Linden or, Hills, Richfield, pro- probably Richfield. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I don't have any idea where I'm. Yeah, gonna just be just just, just find a room in the Best Buy building. Linden, just, just live in it. Hills is pretty great too. I would love to live where Google Fiber is. <laughs> no, sorry, not Google Fiber. Uh, USI. USI. Okay, but I think for a house for you know like a four or five bedroom house in yeah. that area, it's kind of expensive probably so it's definitely true you know just to rent for now so it's like yep. eh, yep. i don't know if that's gonna work but i don't know if i'll ever be able to live into in a place without usi after, oh yeah after living in a place with usi yeah. like if if i had to deal with, with i've gotten used to back to my 12 megabit i had because uh-huh. i had gigabit for freshman sophomore and junior year right that's right and so that's it was sophomore. oh man when i came home for uh, breaks and things it was very difficult mm-hmm. um but now it's been a while so it's okay i had 100 megabit ethernet last fall in europe nice. and that was that was like a good middle ground it was fast <laughs> yeah. enough but it wasn't quite gigabit and so um i'm i'm hoping I, I don't know i'm hoping everyone in the house will agree to pay for the fastest that we can get i, I don't seeing think- as mm-hmm. three of the four or five people there will be computer science yeah i don't yeah. think anybody don't would think. say no yeah so um, and even if it's 150 bucks to get right gigabit four or five people it's I'll so worth it. it i'll do it the hilarious thing about usi i have to say was that like we when we were looking at getting set up with a connection we picked uh we were like oh well we could just do the standard 25 like that was that was the base what? and i was like wait hang on a sec hang on a sec i was like 25 for a dollar 25 for free Oh, well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, and so then, a dollar. Yeah, and then, uh, well, you know, quote-unquote free, included yeah. in the rent. And if you price it out, it would be, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it would be market rate, I guess. Um, but then the next step up was 100 megs. Mm-hmm. And it was like the cost of two burritos per so, month. Per so I was just like, oh, total. whatever. So like total. $20, <laughs> $18 for 100 Yeah, wow. So I was That's like, incredible. Yeah. But I mean, so the the, tr- the trick is that the, the rent is, you know, a, a lot. But <laughs> but it's um it's very, very nice. <laughs> well, that's that's worth it sometimes. Right? Yeah. USI. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. So our last, I'm looking here, our last recording of this was October 29th. Oh which my goodness. with uh, or the next TV only says it was a month ago, so we're fine. Okay, so it's it's, it's just on one month ago, once a month, sort of. And the the, the, yeah. the CMS does not lie, so does and then we had one on August twenty eighth <laughs> and September tenth, so that was like nice. two weeks, pretty much perfect. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, okay, there you go. So I think uh, recording more often. I'll have a setup at home so we can yes. do remote. That'll, and that'll I'll, be I have easier. a setup here, of course. Yeah, exactly. Now we and just have to make sure Brandon isn't driving 100 miles or yeah. not nah. writing 20 pages. And I think we can uh, even ex- uh, continue to explore multi-track recording. Yes. yes. yes that is very nice. That'd be awesome. The, uh, we should probably put in the show notes the uh, YouTube video that uh, 
uh, friend of the network, more than friend of the network, uh, friend, friend of the universe, but also, <laughs> uh, what a good joke. <laughs> I was sitting on that one. Uh, anyhow, um, Ian made a video about uh, the different recording styles. Did he not? I believe he yes, did. Yes, he did. Did I see that? I Maybe. It's on YouTube, so I don't know. How recent was it? I feel like I've, I've subscribed to him for a little while. A week or two ago, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there so, we go. Found oh, it. I'll put it in there. You know, I don't think I actually... I saw that one, but I was busy, and I'd never actually watched it. <laughs> well, so in, in, in brief, so we, we have sort of two styles. Well, three styles, really. So we have what we're doing right now, which is a group podcast here in the studio oh it, he posted to the nexus that's why i'm yes. not subscribed to that <laughs> well maybe you should um all right so, so we have three styles here. we have this one where we're recording all together in the studio live right now in person and it's all going into my computer here mm-hmm. and i will edit it when it's done then we have the other style where maybe maybe somebody is remote like brandon for example um, and, and when that happens, we use the server computer over there, which also doubles as our guest computer, and we use Google Hangouts to sort of pipe him into the mixer and then into the recording, and we can all hear him, and it's great. Um, and Hangouts works fairly well. You know, there's some glitches here and there, and when Brandon had Comcast, there would be glitches here, there, and everywhere. Yes, indeed. Um, and, and so now, with, with US Fiber, you know, it's easier and better, but I still don't have good internet, so it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, and then the, the third solution, which has been done a few times now, is sort of the double-ender, triple-ender approach, yeah. where everybody records independently, and then somebody has to figure out how to link them all back up in post. Um, I think one of those was the Apple event from this fall. This mm-hmm. yeah. That was the first September. one I was involved with. Yeah, yeah, that was the one that you had set up. That was really neat. Turned out really nice. Um, it took a lot more time to edit the things, but um, I didn't record the Hangout call, so... Oh. Um, I just recorded myself. Yeah. Because um, I, I don't have audio hijack. Or, I, I'd need to investigate a little more time into looking at that. Yeah. And then I need the Marco script, which auto if, fixes if, it all. If we had the Marco so script, we would up. be, I would be doing it way more. Um, so the, the biggest problem that we have is if we do double or triple or quadruple or any number, tuple of enders, we have, we run into the problem where the CPU drift is just too great, mm-hmm. and every track is just offset from each other, and it sucks, and it's hard to fix. Yes, indeed. But you just have to hope for um, things like someone interrupts the podcast, and you have to pause <laughs> the recording, so then I can just fix it right there. Right. I mean, sometimes it's easy to fix, but sometimes it's hard to fix. So I, my first one was when we went up to Morris, and we uh, yeah. recorded yeah. that makeshift podcast that was awesome with the worst <laughs> tech i've ever used um and for, for fun i recorded on my phone and on the little recorder thing yeah and i had two tracks so i had to recenter the little recorder track because yeah. i think that was the one that was off consistently oh really yeah hmm. so it's one of those things we'll get there so now no, what we need here is a a time server that runs over the internet that you yes. can sync up every I don't computers. know if that would, I don't know if that'll be enough. Like it, it's it's um, it's it's almost going too fast for that to even work. So we have we buy a nice big crystal. What if we and all... then we have we run a wire to everyone's house that yes. syncs off of that. So we we uh, distribute our our clock cycles. I don't know. That sounds risky. <laughs> risky but awesome. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Well, with all that said, we've uh, had kind of uh, a lot of interesting stuff going on in each of our uh, kind of existences here. Uh, starting with Brian, uh, I know you've been uh, working for a while now. So what's 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 up? How's it going? It's going well. Yeah, I uh, finally uh, started working somewhere uh, mid-November. Somewhere. Somewhere. Where? Where is it? C.H. Robinson, where I interned in 2015. Nice. Um, I'm on their data warehouse customer team. Woo! So we kind of report to more of the marketing, um, um, more customer kind of um, projects. I think we have a lot of, um, we're kind of like a grab bag for a lot of things. Some mm-hmm. other teams in the data warehouse team are more focused on specific um, segments of the company. And we're just kind of a, here, this will affect everyone or mm-hmm. or something. So my project is the lobby visualization, which is the same one I worked on as an intern. Only the code has changed a whole lot. And 
everyone, everyone I'm working with now has not been working on this for very long. And so the whole team has turned around a lot. And mm-hmm. um, so I'm getting to you um, to learn about all of that. We're using Angular 1.5 and well, now maybe 1.6 because the package JSON file had the carrots for yep. 158. And oh, so no. 1.6 was automatically there. Yeah. Uh, I don't Ooh. think I am. I'm not at a point where any build is automatically passing everything at the moment um, in the DevOps pipeline. Jenkins yeah. passes, but the um, UI acceptance end-to-end test fails on the release management server. So I don't know what's going on. Oh, no. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe it's hard code every version and that would be a, a quick solution. Yeah. But that is, that is kind of an interesting thing, if, if, if you don't mind me derailing for a moment. Yeah, go for it. Uh, the the whole like uh, package JSON kind of philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. I know there have been projects that I've worked on where we stick with the carrots, and projects that I've worked on where every version needs to be fixed at whatever yep. it is at at build time, and mm-hmm. that's kind of I guess one of the things that the that the yarn kind of interface to NPM yeah. seems to solve a little bit. Or well, because yarn is like solve. hard yeah. code every version. Yeah. Well, so what yarn does is it's not necessarily for that. Right. What yarn does is it. It expands the dependency tree to a flat tree. Exactly. So it's not a tree, it's a list. Yeah. And so it knows what to download for everything. So yep. uh, a package's dependencies might have another package that it's dependent on, and that one might be using the carrot. Mm-hmm. So instead of having all of these carrot things sliding all the way up, exactly, you just freeze them all simultaneously. Yeah. That's what Yarn does. Absolutely, yep. So I'm... Struggling with that. Hopefully, I'll get something working there. I did do the work to get it working with Angular 1.6. The the new ng on init features um, didn't seem to affect me too much. That's good. However, it was nice. built out. Um, I just had to change the um, URLs default to just a hash in pre 1.6. 1.6 it's a hash bang. Mm, that's um, interesting. There is a setting to remove that, but I just weird went for weird it with one arbitrary hash bang. change that is unnecessary. Yeah, I think it was something to do with clarity of doing local or relative links where if you're snapping to an id or something mm. i no don't quote me on that i looked at it briefly no um and then there is one um other thing because the http service now um, returns a promise that you have to do a then or catch mm-hmm. versus a success and failure um callback i think is what or maybe that was another method yeah. on it mm-hmm. um we had a, a test that um, was doing that, and it was just checking that this promise existed, but it was um, failing. There was more explicit error that because there was no catch case on the promise, the test threw an error rather than saying, yes, it's defined. So yes, indeed. I just added an empty uh, <laughs> then and catch method, and that fixed my one failing test. Nice. Uh-huh. Okay, that was really technical. So this project is also using D3 as well as Microsoft or Bing Maps um, built up with Webpack and all running on Node 0.12. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's incredible that you're still using 0.12 because... Like... I, w- I mean, I'm, I ran w- Node 6 on my server until I tried to push things and they broke. And I'm like, oh, that's well, right. Well, what's weird yeah. to and me I is that... Node version manager and... What's weird is that Webpack even works on such a low version. Like, that's incredible. Right. It is off the rails, that's for sure. I'm having an issue now where uh, I pushed a change when I was running Node 6 up. Mm-hmm. A couple things failed. Then it passed Jenkins. And Jenkins, as far as I can tell, is running Node 0.12. Hmm. Then the acceptance test failed. So then I went and installed Node Version Manager to get 0.12.5, yep. the same version that the Jenkins server is running. And I tried to to run the same things, and it failed for a completely different reason, something basically that it doesn't support ES6. Of course. And so, at least without the har- Harmony flag. Mm-hmm. And so I have no idea what it's actually running, because it seems like it wouldn't run at all if it was running what it says it's running. <laughs> but I don't know. So Who I'm knows? pushing <laughs> DevOps to be able to run not Node 0.12. Oh, yeah. for sure. But that could take a long time, and I do need to push a change out to use the enterprise bing certificate or See, it's key, really rather b- than my really mm, bad private when <laughs> your unfortunate. when your devops team doesn't want to upgrade your versions i think they want to it's on their trello board but it's mm-hmm. a lot of work and it shouldn't be a, that much work if it's a lot of work that's a bad sign they told me to just specify the engines in my package.json file which seems like engines there's yep yeah, in the yeah pack, there's a it's a flag so you can set um like your npm and node version as well as yeah. some other 
I think it's a place for, oh, yeah, yeah. for mm-hmm. systems in like a, a pipeline to check versions of mm-hmm. the base software it's running on. Like, Still bad. Not a good sign. Uh, we have a client at work that um, in order to work on their stuff, they give us this VDI and then the yeah. VDI basically remote desktops into a virtualized Windows box somewhere yes, in their infrastructure. Absurd. Really cool, but absurd. Um, and then they have to authorize any installation of software. And so they have like this repository of NPM versions and it goes up to three and stops. And the one everybody uses is 12. Well, three isn't even like supported any longer. What, what, what do you mean? Like Node three? three? Th- yeah. Node three so IOJS? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. They just haven't even thought about putting four and above on. Because yeah. most things need four now. Exactly. I haven't seen much that requires six, but we'll get there in a in a year. I bet there'll be. I think I think it'll I think it'll skip six and just go up to eight at that point because async await will come in with yeah. eight and it'll change our lives for the better. Yeah, I guess note four has ES six most of the yeah. So yeah, I I've uh, worked on another project that had kind of a similar scenario where you get a VDI mm-hmm. and that actually that the VDI's sole purpose is to run. Uh, essentially remote desktop yeah and uh it's it's really sassy it is but it's obnoxious to work in it is obnoxious to work in um though in in one the one of the one case i used it they must have a really robust network Mm -hmm. it was pretty performant right performant yeah that's that's been our experience too and it's amazing Uh, if they have all of that it infrastructure why do they really need us yeah (laughs) (laughs) i getcha i getcha yeah but uh yeah, so, it's an interesting approach. I have some uh, pipeline issues there that I'm trying to work out, but I'm adding new things and. So, do, so well. do you do you like working there? Is it lots of fun? Yeah, it's it's a large company. The IT building is 450 people, and there's their executive building and their Minneapolis office or branch. Nice. So that's on that campus. Um, have you visited the coffee truck yet, or rather, has the coffee truck visited you? Uh, there's a food truck every week ish, at least during the summer, and they're trying to do this more here. I don't know. I try not to buy lunches. Gotcha. So coffee truck. They do have free coffee there, so that's kind of what they nice. go on. And it's not just like bad coffee. They have grinders there, and they have peace coffee in one kitchen, and dogwood in another, and some that's cool. Other one, another one, another one, another one. So it's there's a um, Slack channel called the Buzz that's nice. talking about coffee. And hmm. Yeah. People get to, there's like, I think, raffles and things, and some of the prizes are. You get to pick the coffee for a month. And... Nice. That's cool. Yeah, the coffee truck that used to be over by where I worked uh, near the Guthrie, mm-hmm. uh, they, used, they used to always tell me that they'd go down to C.H. Robinson one day a week. And it was huh. like, okay. Oh, is nice. that the, the nitro there. one? Uh, they, they're the one that also has nitro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I will look look out for that. I don't know yeah. if they do it during the winter here or not. Maybe. I, and I don't I know if it's probably won. The, the tech building or a different one, but yeah. we'll see. Yep, Misfit Coffee. They're cool folks. Mm-hmm. Right, I'll keep an eye out. Thanks. Well, I've been working on stuff lately. Um, so the the projects I used to be on, I think when we last did this was, um, you know, the drug project thing, right? And that ended. That's done. Good to go. Um, so now I've been working on some Angular 2 stuff, which Ooh. is quite a bit different from what we were doing with Knockout. Yes. Um, but uh, I don't know if you've heard about this, but I hate Angular and Angular 2. Oh, no. Um like if you if you read uh the twitter lately and and you know you're just following some average javascript people they'll probably have shared an article recently about why angular 2 isn't that great <laughs> this is true and and so there's there's any number of reasons and you know some of them are valid reasons and some of them are just like eh you know just personal reasons but my biggest problem with angular 2 is that it is impossible to know anything about how it works and it is just so complex and so pointless. Uh, it, it's a framework for framework's sake at this point, right? Uh-huh. Um, so our, our our first deal was to learn Angular one, so, because um, you know a lot of clients come in with existing projects, so it's good to know at least some legacy tech, so, so that we can spending just, some like company time to learn stuff. here? Yeah, and so we could just flip right over to it if we need to, just take in a project that already exists instead of spinning one up ourselves. And so Angular 1 is slightly okay, like, it's less bad, sort of. Um, but then, we decided to add Webpack into the mix. So instead of being entirely client-side, now we have to have all these pre-compiler step things, and... so Webpack makes every project more efficient by making it less efficient. Yeah, so 
we we had to basically spend four days of a week yep. figuring out how to configure Webpack just right to get it to actually do what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And of course, by the time I was done, I realized, oh man, I was using Webpack one the whole time. <laughs> no. Oh goodness. Um. So so that that's kind of fun. Um. And so at work, I've been pushing people towards Vue for as much as I possibly can. So. We don't have any clients that are going to use Vue right now, mm-hmm. but as I push people to learn Vue and to think of Vue, um, I really like how it works. I like its architecture. Yeah. Um, you know, the one thing that, so we use Java as our backend stack primarily, and we love our service containers, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that Angular provides that Vue doesn't provide. Mm-hmm. But if you just pull in another library that just happens to provide service containers, you're then good you're to go. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. I, I really like that kind of thing. Um, when I when I um I'm I'm working on little side projects at work for work, I will use Vue to showcase why it's so nice. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um I'll tell you a funny story about Mongo now. Is MongoDB web scale? MongoDB is web scale, so much so that you can do anything. Because you're an expert at Mongo oh, at Web man. Scale. Um a lot of a lot of jokes in that one. Yes indeed. Um so the funny thing about Mongo is sorting. Mm-hmm. So let's say you had a table full of, you know, like just pieces you mean a of collection? pieces of data. No, 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 no. Just a table on a website. Just a, oh. a Jav- just a, a JavaScript driven table. Oh, I see. Okay. Let's just say you had a table and it's just full of data. You know, you got some columns and you got a bunch of rows and maybe you need to paginate that. Yep. Well, now let's say you need to be able to sort those columns. So, like, you know, you have a name field, the yeah. last name, a username, and, you know, some other data fields. And you just want to be able to sort. Well, guess who can't sort? MongoDB. MongoDB cannot sort when you do case insensitive <laughs> sorting. So, let's say you wanted to have first and last names be sortable. But you wanted to make it so that it didn't matter if the person entered it in uppercase or lowercase or any case. You wanted to sort case insensitively you can't do it in mongo until version 3.4 oh my wow. goodness and all our servers were running mongo 3.2 point bug fix wow well wow. so we upgraded all our servers mm-hmm. and you think well that must have solved it right well no here's the problem we use spring and guess who didn't update yet spring, spring. Oh, so no. so then i thought okay well here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna literally track down which file it is Make a new file and attempt to overwrite it on the class path. You know, just give it higher priority. Yeah. No, it's hard coded to to not let you do that. You got to be kidding. No, it's not. It's not something you can replace on the class path through the service container. It's literally a part of Spring. It's hard coded. If it, it's like in a for loop, if case insensitive, throw air. Did you? Is Spring open sourced? Yeah. Can you uh, submit an issue or a pull request? I, I, I have. I will do that. Um, so when I tried, the the spring cheer was down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just step in for a second to You'll say you'll never get this done, Ryan. This is one hundred percent my experience with spring as well. <laughs> I'm 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 I'm. Uh, uh, upset but not surprised i guess <laughs> <laughs> it, and and so spring f- spring framework.org is where they they store a bunch of their you know docs and repos and stuff <laughs> it broke too <laughs> <laughs> um oh, it, 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 <laughs> i don't i don't know what happened on on that day um and that that was on thursday and i i f- just i still am baffled about that um so we will have eventually uh, case insensitive sorting on our in our project, mm-hmm. but not anytime soon, apparently. No. Nope. Well, if you need a another upvote on a Jira ticket or something, oh let sure, me know. I'd yeah, love to yeah, increase yeah. visibility. I, absolutely. I, I, like it is so, and you'll get everyone in your office to do that as well. Right? Oh, absolutely. We we've done that. We've opened <laughs> a bunch of tickets, and we've all just made accounts and just upvoted them and you know of course they ignore them but they but they know because all your github accounts are suffixed with dash doherty right yeah i'm kidding (laughs) no but they are oh well yeah yeah but (laughs) well the email addresses for sure will give it away right yeah that's true so what what um and then finally we'll we'll talk about microservices i think because this is loads of fun so the project that we are working on is what we call a bench project because it's something we're doing while we're on the bench waiting between other client engagements and so this is a, um, do you know what a PMO is? 
Uh, but is this a software thing or a business thing? It's a PM thing. Project, project manager management. thing. I was going to say, yeah, project management office is how I've heard it used. Yeah, I don't know what a PMO is. Does P is. stand for project? Yes, and M stands for management. Man- and o-, o stands for something. Office or officer. So, like, for example, when we were doing a big upgrade at the U, we had something, we had an entity called the PMO, the mm-hmm. project management office, and it was made of a bunch of folks who do, uh, who basically, whose sole purpose is to make sure, is, is, to, is to be an alpaca. And, <laughs> and uh, no. Uh, but, uh, really, really cool folks. I knew some of these folks, but they were made up of, of people from like communications offices and like business stuff. And their, their role was to like, make sure that if, if this change goes through, is it going to cause everything to, 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 to be awful? Out. Yeah. Well, right. So this thing we're making is sort of the PMO's dashboard thingamajig. Oh yeah. So it's like, there's a risk assessment thing with a bunch of like predetermined risk dimensions and they yeah. can approximate the riskiness of a certain you know, endeavor nice um and then they can document it and store it and you know put notes on it whenever they want um there's an ideas repository so as project managers and bas and presumably yeah. developers i guess if they even have ideas do they even think do developers think i don't know i don't know do, <laughs> it's like do androids dream i do i, tr- developers I tried think? to think i tried to think once it was off. my uh, my latest idea that i i told my my ba was we should gzip and cache these you know, two to yeah. six megabyte JSON files. You don't sending. say. <laughs> yes, indeed, you should. <laughs> so um, that's my latest endeavor. So this the software is, is, is you know sounds cool, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here's my problem with it. So we're using uh, you know just some simple CRUD based APIs in the back end just to store all the stuff mm-hmm. in a MongoDB because I wanted to start it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it should be simple and easy, and it is. Like there's four collections in the mongo database yep. that's it because that's all we're storing simple stuff but for some reason somebody's great idea was to make this five microservices <laughs> <laughs> so there's one for the risk stuff there's one for the idea stuff there's okay. one for user stuff okay. and then there's another one for just because nice um and and um i don't I like i don't i don't know how much you've used the microservice approach yeah. but but at some point they actually need to do something before they need to be a microservice. This is true. So I guess I sort of do this thing. So we're not Netflix. We're not Spotify. We're yeah. not, we're not like, we don't have 500 microservices. We don't need that many. Yeah. So I sort of start from the approach of let's make it a monolith and then split things out if we need to. Once we know what, what each of these microservices needs to be. What, yeah. How and those and once they actually get separated. big enough to merit being independent. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, and so here I'll give you the the best example of the day. At some point, it was before our team got onto the bench yeah. to work on the bench project. So that's how it works. Yeah. Like teams that come off of an engagement just go do whatever bench project's around. Somebody had had this great idea of making a forgot password service. And and so then they were confused as what to do when they had to make a forgot username service. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, we fixed that and rolled it right back into the user service uh, standalone. That's so micro. Thank goodness. Oh man, it's smaller than micro at this point, right? That's nano, nano service. Nano yeah, service. There you go. Yeah. So that that was that's been my fun week on um well my fun two months. <laughs> yeah. No, I get you. No, yeah. that's that's awesome though. I think a lot of companies have something like that. Um, uh, one of the things that I did for that at, at the U a while back was actually uh, that backed by Google Google Sheets. Yes, I, I think I mentioned. I think yes. I described that to you guys once. That was kind of cool. And um, uh, it turns out I'm not the only person to do that. There, there. Yeah, the, I've seen other other projects yeah. by other companies that actually also have their ops dashboards and stuff. Yeah. Um. Or, so ops in that sense, referring to creative ops, mm-hmm. which is, uh depending on the way your company is structured um, can actually either be, can, can also include technical ops mm-hmm. hol- hilariously, not actually hilariously, but kind of, kind of neatly. But yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's an interesting thing to see then. <laughs> well, so, and well, another thing too is I've, I've only ever worked at Google apps organizations. Mm-hmm. And as a result, a lot of these sort of internal tools tend, tend to use, Oh no, are you all on Outlook? I am. Uh yep. Microsoft all the way. 
yeah. team foundation server uh, for I, okay well i'm not that bad stories and management um trello is just a proxy that the B- ba handles <laughs> for, for <laughs> oh, people outside oh my God. of <laughs> trello is is the thing i don't touch but what people outside of our our team look at uh, so you're saying trello is a proxy that's updated by a human being yeah to match to, TFS. To match TFS. Oh, yeah. But it's so uh, it's the, it's where the backlog of things for this project uh, is. Okay. That's it's, reasonable. TFS is so our team, because everyone else on the customer team uses TFS. So right, it's, right. That makes sense. It's kind of a, a weird <laughs> weird area there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently in the um, new year, I might be learning C Sharp and .NET hey. again. Nice. Because um, allegedly we have some C Sharp work or something to work on. Yeah, we do as well. Hmm. It's pretty terrifying. <laughs> I see. I was. Did I tell? I I might have mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think at least two of our episodes have been opportunely timed, so I could talk about this. I uh, essentially set out to learn as much as I could about C Sharp in like four hours. Yeah, that was fun. It's not that bad. Um, huh. But mostly because it was a project I need. I really needed to get done. Yeah. on C Sharp in in a couple hours, and um, and it it's pretty pretty reasonable, Java-y. pretty Java y mm-hmm. and pretty. Uh, like the tooling is pretty great. Of course, mm-hmm. Visual Studio, yeah. which some say is like the best IDE in the yep. universe. Mm-hmm. I reserve my judgment on that, but it's, it seems pretty helpful. Like it's a helpful it's IDE. It's certainly not the worst. Yeah, it's definitely not the worst. That'd be Dreamweaver. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. Every, every time, occasionally somebody, uh, when I was working at the U, they would, they would ask for help with Dreamweaver. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, sh- sure. But maybe we should set you up with a different tool first. Uh, and they're like, no, my classes, I have to use Dreamweaver. And I'm like, has your teacher ever published a website ever? No. Almost certainly not. I yeah. remember using Dreamweaver in high school for no. the eight, web page design with, with right. Reinhardt. And oh my God, I hated it. There was like, I was like, oh, cool. You can just like drag stuff around. But then I look at the code generators. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know. No. Right. See, yeah. if the Dreamweaver is like this weird factory where like you put, you put in Hopes good and ideas dreams. and hopes and dreams and, and then out comes nightmares nightmares yeah that's a good way to put it because like so much of that code as you as you mentioned brian is like gobbledygook that is not even remotely related to the way that you actually want to write html if you're doing it by hand uh, and the the hilarious thing is that at a certain point uh like adobe made a better version of dreamweaver it's called brackets <laughs> yes and it's super simple it's a text editor with a live preview function built in, mm-hmm. and that is way better than Dreamweaver perhaps will will ever end up being. Yeah. Uh, what a thing. Anyhow. Yes, indeed. No. Yeah. So you've been working on stuff. I have been working on stuff, indeed. You don't say. I, I have. I, I've been pretty insufferably uh, rambling on about my thesis for like the past as long as I've been working on my thesis. Uh, I think that's like six months now. Uh, and... Uh, there's actually some kind of interesting technical stuff that goes into this. Uh, this is the first Python project I've worked on in a long time. Yay, Python. Yeah. Are you using Python 3? I am using Python 3. Ooh. The first algorithm uh, was implemented in Python 2.7. And then I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> uh, and and moved, Solid choice. moved it to Python 3. The yeah. hilarious thing is... I did not need to change the code at all. Only the the command line executable I used to run it, that <laughs> and worked. that was well written Python two point seven code. Thank you. Yeah, so that's <laughs> also rather simple Python two point seven code. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, the the complexity kind of comes in. You know, what, well, what? Who was I talking with? There was there was someone who I was ta- describing this to. It might have been you all at JavaScript Minnesota, but like Python and pseudocode are essentially the same thing. Well, I, I, I always it. think that Java and pseudocode are the same, but this yeah. is true. This is true. Right. But the, there's, there's a certain, for some certain definition of pseudocode, yeah. Python can be pseudocode. It'd be, um, it, it would be pseudocode without brackets. Hey, Brendan, you should come to Pimentos with me. Yes, I totally will. I've been will. going, I've been everyone since I first went to my first one. Is that another Wednesday meetup or are they Tuesdays? The Thursdays. The Thursdays. Okay. Awesome. I'm so excited. I'm going to go to all the next meetups. one is at BuzzFeed. What? Oh, that's so I cool, went actually. In the North Loop. Yeah. It's a really nice office. Oh, the last my one goodness. there was really it was quite fun. Right. On. So they moved out of uh, uh, Augusto. Um, no, well, they no, weren't in the, Augusto. The one on this last Thursday was in Augusto. Okay. Um, so there have only been two in Augusto. This will be the second one at BuzzFeed. Nice. There's a web dev night. One was at Veritas. One was at Dev Jam. So nice. they've, they've been in like a new place every time. Oh, so wow. So they, they float around. I think there's some usuals. But they're not like one place. All okay. Time. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I'm I'm very excited 
to uh, do that, and I think work, work will will help me out. I'll I'll bring my my Space One Fifty crew, our squad, uh, as many of them. You as guys I should can. host. Oh, uh, we are so down for hosting meetups. Like it's not even funny. You um, should you should host a Nexus TV meetup. Yeah, <laughs> Space One Fifty. What would that even do? It'd be like three people in the room. <laughs> Well, they can That'd learn about fun. podcasting and how and how we work. Okay, like, oh. and we could we could get out the the VR stuff for you guys. We could yeah. just yeah. we could just work on, on our CMS. In yeah, front there, of a group there you of people, go. Right, just, it's true. Ooh, typing. We've got, see, we yeah. Uh, anyhow, so yeah, work stuff. I should talk about work stuff now, shouldn't I? Probably. Um, so, uh, one of the things that I've been working on of late is a React Native component that implements a uh, an API um, or. Uh, that essentially implements bindings to some other um, like vendor SDK. Mm-hmm. And that has been really interesting, really interesting stuff. Um, it's this, this time around writing objective C makes a lot more sense than it did like 10 years ago when I first started trying it, which when is like, Brennan oh, was a wee little junior high school student. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't blame him. I, I bought that. I bought that big objective C book and I was like, yeah, no, I I, then I went back to writing JavaScript. There are brackets everywhere. What do I do? I, well, yeah, there's square brackets and curly braces. So I now have no idea. No, but, um, and, you know, after a couple of years of CS education, it's very, very much um, more reasonable to understand what mm-hmm. these pluses and minuses before the methods mean and all that stuff. Yep. Sending messages to objects is no longer so, such a foreign thing. Um, but, uh, one of the things about React Native components that are kind of weird is that you have to kind of, if you're building a separate React Native project, you almost have to like build that module in alongside an existing React Native application because otherwise all of these headers and stuff that you need to pull in aren't going to be present in the project and you'll get a bunch of build failures and yep. everything will be sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how many of, many of the other React Native bridges to kind of native SDKs work. Right. Um, but there's not really a good guide for it. I mean, so there's the React Native docs, but I mean, yeah, much the, like the every React other docs. React docs. What docs? Yeah, essentially you have to know it in order to, to yeah. know it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But that's that's all right. There's there's lots of stuff I've been able to piece together, and I'm hoping to write a thing about how how the heck to do this that maybe formal you know maybe formalizes some of these practices um, just so that other people can at least critique them and tell me how how they can be improved, um, but. Otherwise, it's really tricky, I think, to, you almost have to have a module already done in order mm-hmm. to write a module. So yeah, that, that, that seems to be the pattern sort of with React in general. Like, yeah. you can't use React at uh, any reasonable complexity without having already used it at reasonable complexity. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but, or, or with burning a lot of time learning stuff. But that's, that's part of what makes it, uh, such a neat ecosystem, I think, I guess. Um, I guess, I guess. I, I guess, but it's, you know, and it's really slick once you can get that to work, like the iOS bindings, once I could just get a thing that, that allowed me to call like objective C code that would just return a string. And then I could get that back into the, into the JavaScript side. It was awesome. Yep. Really neat. Um, I guess another thing that I've been working on recently is like voice interfaces, which is kind of neat. Mm. It kind of intersects with the natural language parsing stuff. I was so doing. You're going to have an app on the Google home. Maybe so. I, I don't know. This is, this is, that was more for fun. Um, but I ended up picking up an Alexa dot, uh, or an echo dot, oh, an nice. Amazon yeah. dot thingy that's like, has the thing that talks to you. Yeah. Um, and I just got it yesterday and it is a very, very neat contraption. Very neat contraption. Uh, and building, uh, building a, an application for it is really rather simple. Mm-hmm. The trick is there aren't, there isn't really like a, a great deployment process for it. So not. if you want to commit anything and track your changes, which like now I think I mentioned on Twitter a couple of times that I'm kind of using Git and GitHub for everything that I can, because mm-hmm. that's how I work now. Yep. And that as a result, it's helpful to parallelize that as much as I can. Um, even if like, for example, for my task tracker for the past couple of weeks, I was just like using a GitHub project that had a bunch of markdown files and the markdown files are basically empty. Mm-hmm. Um, like just being able to use that ecosystem is really nice. Uh, and it's really difficult to do that with uh, an Alexa app. So it seems because generally you're, the assumption is that you're using a Lambda function an AWS Lambda function. Uh, and oh, nice. that's, that's, that's fine. Cool. Yeah. That, that's fine. But it's very difficult to get the log statements back out of it unless it's configured in just, just such a way. Uh, and a lot of that's not necessarily documented. So could definitely be improved. 
Uh, the other thing though, is that they do seem to really want people to create Alexa apps. So, mm-hmm. um, the motivation is there, even if the docs haven't quite caught up. Uh, also editor wise, I'm using visual studio code now. Yeah. How did that ooh. happen? Uh, this kind of came alongside the react native component kind of work that mm-hmm. I was doing. I was like, huh, may as well try and, uh, and see what this is all about. Cause Adam wasn't cutting it for this sort of work yeah. that has to kind of traverse those like project files and yeah, stuff. And there's the, you know, how react projects get there's hundreds of components all the way down yeah yeah so you need something that's a little bit uh, faster faster yeah Will, willing to handle a project of that complexity visual studio code is pretty neat um also i'm using bear which is a markdown editor and i think we talked about this a little bit during the fringe but uh in the show itself uh what i what i want to mention most about bear is that it's really nice because it allows you to tie like markdown files synced essentially without having to think about it across um, a like your Mac OS devices, your iOS devices. And that was a thing that I really felt wasn't quite there with one writer or any of the other markdown apps I was trying to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably 100% there with notes, mm-hmm. but the trick is I really don't like notes. Hmm. I know I'm, I know I'm awful, but like, I don't know if I like notes either. I just, I just want it to be able to, I just want to be able to write markdown yep. and have that markdown synced from place to place. Cause I have the markdown pipelines, whether it's on my iPad or on my Mac, I just need to make sure that that file is in both places without having me to explicitly say, Hey, put this in iCloud yeah. or Hey, like Dropbox it. And I do not want to use Dropbox sync again. I'm not a fan yeah. of like, I what, just want what, to integrate. What CPU usage? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what CPU usage indeed. What memory footprint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Memory Bigfoot more like. <laughs> um, yes indeed yes indeed but i guess that's like a whirlwind tour of what's been up with me of late there's going to be some more really cool stuff in the future i think yeah um, are you excited to be done with you i'm very excited to be for done now with you. of course for, for now yeah uh if if this thesis project goes over well and it, it may and if i end up going to conferences with it and stuff maybe i'll need to uh i'll need to do more with that mm-hmm. but uh we'll we'll see I, de- I definitely want to open source that pr- package. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Because, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it might be that time in the show. It the may time well be. for dun, dun, new dun. Twitter followies. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm I'm first in the list, and I'm already saying words, so I guess I'll I'll go first. I hereby nominate myself. Uh, the the first kind of Twitter followee that I've done is, is this uh, company called Zupa Grafica, which is out, out of Poland. Um, and they're like a creative design studio that has lots of really neat, uh, kind of projects related to architecture and stuff. Uh, not necessarily super technical in nature, but I just love this feed. Um, I've been following it for some time now. Um, and if you're at all interested in that sort of architectural, uh, kind of, uh, modernist aesthetic, it is a high quality Twitter feed to follow. Uh, also they're a design firm and I highly recommend that technical folks follow design firms because they have lots of interesting stuff that they, that they share. That's kind of outside the realm of perhaps like the normal technical content. Um, but it still can be super applicable to, to work in things. I just want to mention that, uh, their website apparently uses iWeb. Yes, indeed it does. I think that's kind of funny. It is very funny. Very funny indeed. Ah, uh, iWeb. I never. I think I opened it once way back when, but I was like, "What's this? I don't know. I don't know how to code." And so I closed it. You know, <laughs> for like freshman year of high school. Yeah, that is such an adorable throwback. Ah, uh, yes. I think my parents' IMAX has IDVD on it. Yes. Oh, oh it I looks think so bad on like El Capitan or it does indeed. Sierra. It does indeed. I don't. My 2008 MacBook might have it as well, but I I had reinstalled the OS. Mm-hmm. With you know like Snow Leopard or, or or something newer, so I don't think it it auto installed. I didn't mm. use my restore disk from ten five five. Right, so it didn't quite get everything. I gotcha. That'd be fun to look at. Right, look around at. If you put an SSD in that thing, yeah, and boot up Leopard. Oh my god, it'd be so fast. It would fly. Yeah. Well, my next follower is uh, Christoph, who is uh, the one of the individuals behind Jest and Yarn. Uh, okay, yeah. and both, both of these are really neat projects. Just is really cool. I've been using that, uh, with the, yeah. uh, with the React Native module. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to kind of test a little bit uh, more thoroughly. Of course, the trick is in order to test that you really need to have a React Native project around it. Right. But that's all well and good. I'm more than okay with that. 
um, because making a really kind and of... And so with Jess, you just test each component and everything's good. Yeah, more or oh, less. so nice. More or less. In Angular, when you test, you have to do all sorts of mocks and injections and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one of the things I've been really impressed with about Facebook and that ecosystem is that it's very much like... Uh, like they have testing tools around it. Mm-hmm. They've got like these file system watchers and, yep. and the type checker and stuff or the pseudo type system surrounding it, I guess. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then Zulu alpha kilo, this is another agency. Um, they're really neat. I think they're in Alberta. If I recall correctly, no, they're not. They're in Toronto. I was going to say, it almost sounds like a name of a sorority or something. <laughs> no, it's the phonetic alphabet, not, not yeah. the Greek alphabet. Though the phonetic alphabet and the Greek alf- alphabet uh, intersect in some cases, hmm. uh, as as with the middle thing there, these folks do some really cool stuff, um, and they um, particularly tend to uh, kind of intersect uh, between advertising and and digital, uh, hmm. which, as as you all know, is kind of my jam, uh, and uh, as a result, like they. A, a couple of their case studies have been kind of really neat to look at. Uh, it's kind of interesting too, because they're not actually uh, part of an agency network. I don't believe though. I should probably verify that real quick. So I, I love this website. So right. uh, when you get to it, there's a, uh, you know, all this stuff on the page and then there's a little thing down at the bottom that says, this is a pretty website. When you click it, it says our lawyers made us say this. <laughs> Where is this at the bottom? Uh, it's in the middle. It's like a uh, legal note. This is a parody website with a gavel. Yes. On ZulaAlphaKilo.com? Yeah. Yep. Oh, <laughs> this I see. This is a parody of ourselves. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, agencies like that are just always fun to that is really play fun. around with because they're, they're so sassy like this. Uh, particularly fellow independent agencies like the place where I work. Yeah. Fun stuff. Well, I think that just about does it for me. Yeah. All right. I followed... Some, well, I had big Twitter changes in my life since the last <laughs> I uh I uh, officially retired underscore Brian Mitchell underscore. That was I know, quick. I know it it was only a couple months, but I should have just done this before. So now I'm just using my one account, no longer two, and you should all follow at Brian Mitch L. <laughs> Still difficult to pronounce and say, but um It's it's Brian Mitchell with one L. And no E. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Brian Mitch L. Wow. I, I don't know if, if you can kind of guess the spelling when I say it like that. But. Sort of, but it's like it could be like El Capitan. Tr- yeah, that's true. <laughs> so if it if it's spelled out correctly in a service that shows the the casing and the username, yeah. it should be capital B, capital M, and capital L. That kind of separates nice. it. So that matches my GitHub profile, and I changed my Facebook and Instagram usernames to match that. So mm-hmm. bman four seven eight nine is is going away. I mean, it'll be on my email, but. Other than that, it should be disappearing as I can, as I make new accounts. And yep. So uh, you could follow me on there. Uh, I have followed um, three people I put here. So the first one is uh, Ricky Brundrit. He works at Microsoft yeah. doing. Um, he's the senior program manager for Big Maps. So he's, hey. he is the person who I see on every single comment of any concern about Big Maps That's when funny. I'm working on it. So I figured I'd give him a follow on Twitter. Cool. Nice. Um, then we have uh, Jonathan Davis, who is um, a person who works on WebKit at Safari. He's the person who writes the release notes for the new technology preview updates. And that is that is the reason why I follow him on Twitter. Awesome. <laughs> I, f- I figured I could always have some more insights to WebKit development and things. Because yeah. that's my browser and rendering engine of choice. Same. And finally is... Um, um, Johannes um, Ragam, he's this um, guy who spoke at the most recent um, Pimentos. He talked about the ZOP database. Um, no, ZOP is not the database. Z-O-D-B. Maybe that is ZOP object database, something like that. It's a database nice. written in Python for Python. That's cool. Um, so he gave a talk about that. It sounds pretty interesting. He's, I think he's just here teaching for this semester, and he's going back to Austria. So hmm. he's... Just a short hop, hop across the pond for a, a fall and going back. So that's awesome, though. Yeah, you can find his slides of the talk on his Twitter, and yeah, that's that's who I followed. I mean, I follow a few more people, but I nice. mean, like like two hundred plus people in the last 
on this account at least. But most of those so proud. I <laughs> yeah, did, you're just like Brandon now. I did unfollow a few people within that that bunch as well. Yeah, and of course my my followees section is blank here because I don't follow people very frequently. It's you know. all good. There's Ferris Bueller quote about this. Something about people shouldn't follow people; they should follow themselves or something. I follow myself. I follow myself on Twitter. <laughs> I, 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 it is fun to look at your old tweets. Like it's uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I was doing that that day. Huh? I wish yeah. you could connect Time Hop to multiple Twitter accounts. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one reason why I really didn't like having two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's now a gap of five years of tech thing, or four and a half years of tech tweets that I just have missing. The, I see stuff about like iOS five jailbreak, and then I don't see anything about tech from mm. since, since about that time on. Yeah. So. Well, it was great to do this again. It was. Yeah, it's good. Good pod kit. Yep. And hopefully the next one won't be t- two months. So one February. Two months, yeah. I think we should push for January. I think, Absolutely. I think that's achievable. Yes. Yeah. It's even specific and measurable. Wow. And attainable. Oh, my gosh. And Are you a project manager? I think it's, I think it's just able. <laughs> I think I did. I, well, so the trick is I think I did there just do S-M-A-A-T and not... S M A R T. No, I'm not. See, I'm, so I'm not. I'm. I'm not. A, I'm not a project manager. I am. I am a student of strategic communications, though. Mm, it's the pretty overlap, close. The overlap is great, and I'm friends with a lot of project managers. I adore my project managers. They're all so great. <sighs> yeah. Well, I think that just about does it for this episode, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes, I. I believe it does. All right. Well, we will see you all closer than one month from now. It could be 2017, though. Well, it, it might be t- 2017, but it probably... I think we should say at least by January 31st. We'll yeah. Yes. Yeah. In 2017. This is true. <laughs> See you... Or, or January 21st of... I mean, or 31st of 2018, we'll absolutely at least have one episode. Oh, absolutely. I mean, unless something catastrophic happens, I mean... <laughs> I mean, even if that, I think we could pull it together. Probably, yep. yeah. Yes, uh, we might have to use, like, Morse code and pigeons, but... Yes, or, I mean, at, at least... I mean, it could be a two-second recording of someone saying... Help me. <laughs> right up on uh, Podkit feed. Yeah, I, yeah, I will get right on that. And, edit. Then, and then Ian would put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. So, yes. where can we find you on the internet? <sighs> where can you find me on the internet? I uh, can find me probably most most frequently on Twitter, where I am Brandon underscore MN. Uh, if not there, you can also find me on Snapchat, Instagram, or yeah, that's probably most of it. Uh, at that very same username, uh, Snapchat is really fun, where I post pictures of uh, food that I eat at the restaurant that opened two doors down from me. Ooh, that's um, convenient. And that, yes, it is frighteningly, dangerous. frighteningly convenient and dangerous. And I may have ordered an awful lot of food there yesterday <laughs> uh, when I went to celebrate finishing my thesis. Yes. Um, you can also find me on GitHub where I'm... Uh, what am I on GitHub? Well, Are you Skyline Project still? Yes, I think I am sk- still Skyline Project you on there. You can change that. I did. Well, see, I can't change it to something with an underscore, though. And um, all you of my... You just say Brandon underscore spelled out. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Don't oh, do gosh. that. That sounds amazing, but awful at the same time. <laughs> Mostly I, just awful. I think I am going to change my internal GitHub username to Brandon, though. Uh, but nobody will ever see that yeah. unless everyone starts working at my company. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Well, you Tiny have, sales pitch. You have Brandon at umn.edu, so that's no longer. That's, oh, no longer? Or was it just a temporary thing? Yeah, we'll or go with you're that. Not working there. Yeah, we'll we'll go with that. It's the second <laughs> one. It's actually the second one. Um, yeah. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L. Um, <laughs> I'm also that on GitHub and Facebook. I'm also on Snapchat at bman four seventy nine. My ro- most recent uh, story was me taking a selfie on a train that was empty. Yeah, well, that's nice. I don't know. It was the last station, so I thought, why not? Oh, sure. Hashtag trains. Hashtag trains. Hash um, trains. My favorite data structure. Continue. Hash trains. <laughs> <laughs> I think that about does. It. Oh yeah, my website. I thought I have that too. <laughs> Brian, about me. Nothing's changed since the yeah, last episode. I think. Maybe updated my social media links but that's i mean did you add any uh, additional um affiliate link things oh yeah i think sticker mule is new on there yeah nice. if you're buying sticker mule things and that's they... because we have nexus stickers now yeah if you want to buy sticker mule things uh you can save ten dollars and you also give me ten dollars by just using my link so 
Nice. That's free money for us. I like I like how I sort of started that, like on my page. Just, you absolutely yeah. inspired me to do the same. And I, and I think it's so funny because I I always thought I don't, I'm never going to have any of these, so it doesn't matter to me. But then it suddenly happened. I used your DigitalOcean affiliate link yeah, to make my account. So I think someone who I interned with used my DigitalOcean thing. I don't. Yeah, I think he used it. I don't know if it's gone through yet, if he's had it long enough. Someone at work was trying to register a domain name, and I, I, I forgot to tell him to use my affiliate links to to, to hover. Yeah. Like, Darn. Yeah, I'm always looking out for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should put... Is, do I have Dropbox on there? That's a good one to have, because that yeah. gives you just free space. And I'm still using my EDU email. Only, oh, I do have it on there. If okay. only anybody liked Dropbox. <laughs> I have more space than I could use. I think my free two gigabyte account is somewhere around like eighteen gigabytes. That's so. awesome. Oh, that's absurd. Sixteen point cool. eight. It was at eighteen once, but there was, it was a two year like two gigabyte expiration. Hmm. Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar, and of course on my website RyanRamperset dot com, where I have not updated since de- September what I've been doing. But I just told you what I've been doing for the last two months. So <laughs> take this episode as the update in place of that. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, it's been fun. It has been. Yeah. See you all soon. Mm-hmm. Have a good one.